How's it going everybody and welcome to our next video in our enterprise practice lab. Um, so in this video we're going to be focusing on the back-to-back -back VPC configuration up here which is going to be very similar to what we did down here in Nexus Distribution and Catalyst Access. Back-to-back -back VPC when I first got introduced to it blew my mind like you can do them back-to-back -back? like why would you want to? That on a customer call had no idea it was possible. A couple people chuckled because they thought it was funny because it was a brand new concept to me. Anyway, very possible. Done it a do bunch of times now for a variety of different reasons. The last one that I did it for was we had Nexus 9Ks as the distribution layer in the data center. Uh, and uh, actually it was a collapse core, distribution and the, uh, the edge uh, where they were doing routing. And then downstream they had Nexus 3Ks because uh, the Nexus 9Ks that they were using only had 16, uh, is it 16 ports, 24 ports, 24 ports on them, and they were flat out of ports. So they just decided to do a VPC down to a couple of Nexus 3Ks. Um, so a very possible design. Um, so we're going to be going through and setting that up where the, uh, the 5K and the 6K that are right here, let me go ahead and get out of the way. Uh, these two switches right here are going to be ac acting as our access layer, and these two switches right here are going to be acting as our distribution layer. And we're going to be setting it up uh, VPC down to switch 12. Now, what's interesting about this whole thing is from here, the, the 3K and 4, uh, 9K, 3 and 4, all the way down to the servers, is going to be all layer 2. And what's, that's going to be kind of interesting because the 3K and 4K will be our gateway. And we're only going to have one VLAN down here. So it's going to be a much easier configuration from that perspective. But that's as far as we're going to take it. And um, so it's definitely a different way of doing things. Now, one of the things that I run into every once in a while with this new lab setup that I have here is if I come all the way over here to the right, server 61 should be turned on. And currently, it looks like it's powered off if you look right here. And if I come over here and hit the enter key, type in no. Like it sort of responds, like it's kind of ghosty, if you will. Um, so it's like not respond. Uh, there, oh, there it goes. So the it looks like it's not working, right? Because it's powered off. So, but it won't actually pass any traffic when it's in this type of a situation. So I've actually got to start it, <laughs> which is actually kind of funny. Um, so it's started now, and if I click here, it won't let me log in. So I've actually got to shut it off, give that a second or two, and then turn it back on again. Give that a second here. And then click the button again, and it'll come online. So I'm just going to shuffle this guy over here to be right there. Okay, so now that I've got that problem squared away, let's go ahead and take a look at our configuration, look at our, our lab guide. And what we have to do, so I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. We're, on, we're basically going to do the same thing we did down here, just on a bigger scale. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to show you where there's a lot of repetitive config. I'm actually going to build us a notepad and just copy and paste in what's needed so that we can see all the details behind it. Um, so whenever I'm talking to customers and uh, we're doing a lot of repetitive configuration or I'm trying to help them optimize their time and be more efficient with the configs I always say hey here's a CCIE pro tip and this is what I what you would do and it actually resonates quite well with most customers they're like oh I didn't know that so a lot of times it's just it's a it's a fancy copy and paste or an edit here or there they're just to help them be quicker with their config because at the end of the day no matter how you break it down my end goal when I'm configuring things, for some reason, I always am in, got to configure it as quickly as I can because I never really got out of the mentality of being fast on the command line. That never went away because I had, when I was ramping up my, my practice for the lab exam, it was, it's all about speed, right? It didn't matter what I did yesterday. And I, I heard a quote uh, from one of the guys that I was studying with, and he made the, com the comment of the only easy day was yesterday because now we're back in a different set of challenges today 
we got through yesterday. We're still we're still hanging in there, which is actually a mantra that the, the Navy SEALs use. That is the only easy day was yesterday. So I'm going to take what I my experience of all of this stuff, and I'm going to show you guys how to uh, get everything up and running and working, and then we're going to go and get the endpoints squared away. So we're going to do quite a bit of config, but I'm going to I'm going to be doing this in mostly in Notepad. Just so you guys can see how this works, let me go ahead and get this out of the way for right now, because it's necessary. So we're, I'm literally going to take build a config in Notepad, and then we're going to copy and paste it into the switches and make minor adjustments, so you guys can see what that looks like. So you could configure the two uh, one VPC side first, copy and paste the config out, make some edits, and then paste it into the next switch. But I am a big believer in How can I put this politely? You should know the config up here, right? There might be some specifics that you miss here or there, but for the most part, I can remember the majority of the config off the top of my head. Um, it's something I pride myself on doing, where if I don't know the config, I'm pretty quick at finding it. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with this process. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna work our way through all the config changes that we need to do, and I'm gonna focus on getting the 9K VPC up and running fully, like uh, the port channels themselves, the back-to-back -back capability, all the way down to the port channel going down to switch 12, fully configured in Notepad, then I'll just copy and paste it in. Not really trying to show off, but just trying to give you guys an example of what the possibilities are. So let me go ahead and get out of the way, and we're gonna go ahead and con start configuring this. So the host names are already configured. So the first thing I need to do is go feature, and it's gonna be VPC, feature, um, LECP feature. Um, we're going to do the top switches first, and I'm going to do VRRP feature interface dash VLAN. That should be enough out of the gate. And then we're going to type in VRF peer dash keep alive. We're going to put in Ethernet one slash one. BRF member peer dash keep alive IP address for this particular case we 10.1.2.1 slash 30 no shut and then we're gonna do let's see interface eth 1 slash 2 through 3 type in uh, switch port Switch port mode trunk channel dash group 100 mode or uh, mode active no shut. We're gonna do uh, that should be in that's I have the VPC or the VRF configured. I have the port channel configured. I'm gonna type in VPC. 30, uh, domain 34 peer dash keep alive destination is going to be 10.1.2.2 source of 10.1.2.1 VRF peer dash keep alive peer switch uh, peer gateway Layer three peer router, role priority of one. We're gonna type in interface port channel 100, VPC peer link. And then we're gonna do interface ETH one slash four through five, no shut, switch port, switch port mode trunk, Channel group 45. Actually, let's do what's it common? 34 and 45. Oh no, say 34 and 56. So let's do channel group. I don't know what the channel group numbers go up to. I'm using 100, so I should be able to use something in the middle. Channel group. I didn't. That's one thing I didn't think think about. Uh, what the actual 
port channel because there's going to be a port channel between the switches connecting all this together. Uh, let's use let's use 45 because the interfaces are going to be 45. That makes sense. Channel group 45 mode of active. And that's going to be across the board on all of them. And so that is pretty much everything I need to do for, and that'll get me up and running on both switches. So let me just review my config, make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Um, let me go ahead and type in VLAN 200, name VLAN 200, interface VLAN 200, IP address of 172.31.200.3 slash 24. No shut. BRP 200. Address is going to be 172.31.200.1. And we'll go ahead and give 9K3, um, we'll say priority of 150. So that should be everything I need to do there. All that looks good. Let me scroll to the top. So I have my features enabled. If you keep alive, Ethernet 1 slash 1 is there. IP address. Those look right. Peer gateway. Peer link. Peer, uh, the channel group between the switches. The VLAN. The VLAN. Uh, the SPI. VRRP. Okay. Uh, and then uh, no shut this. Okay. So if I do, if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to copy all of this like so into Nexus 9K3 and let's cross our fingers and hope I did everything right. Bam. Okay, so let me come up here and do a this guy to dot two. Let's make this a dot one. Make this a dot two. Come down here and we'll say this will be a dot four. Just like that. And then no priority there. And then roll priority two here. Okay. That looks good. So let me go ahead and no shut that. Okay, so all that looks good. Let me go over here and do a show V show VPC. Unusable VRF. Why is it show run VRF peer keep alive? Show run section VRF. Show run interface ETH one slash one. Show VPC. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. I'm going to copy all of this, 9K4. Copy pasta. So I'll go back over here and do a show IP route VRF peer keep alive. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Uh, show run. Yeah, I didn't take it. Oh, I'm an idiot. BRF context. That would explain it. Okay, my mistake. Show VPC. There we go. Okay, so, uh, perfect. Secondary enabled, everything else looks good. Port pure, there we go. Okay, my mistake on that. So, one little issue out of all of that. So, my bad. Show port dash channel summary. Okay, cool. So now what I get to go do is basically do the exact same thing, but on the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and on 5K6 and 5K, 
six and five uh, nine nine K five and nine K six. I'm getting rid of the SBI config because this won't be doing any SBIs. Um, I'm going to be coming down here and schwacking all of this. It'll straight be VLAN 200 and I can come in here and get rid of VRRP. Don't need VRRP either. Um, VPC, LACP. Uh, all that looks good. So this will be configured on Roll priority one on uh, Nexus 9K5. That looks squared away. Okay, so I, sh I look, I feel comfortable with that. Nexus 9K5, admin, admin, global config, copy pasta. 9K6, we're gonna change this. Oh, see, I screwed up right there. Didn't, didn't check my config, moving too fast. Um, not that big of a deal. 9K5, port channel config. We'll wait for, we'll have to go back in and make an adjustment on the Ethernet 1 slash 1. Okay, so interface ETH 1 slash 1, IP address of 10.1.2.1 slash 30. Do sh or, uh, show IP interface brief, BRF, pure keep alive. Okay, cool. So now I can get to come over here and do destination and then roll priority two. Okay, copy that over to 9K6, admin, admin, copy pasta. So I'll give that a minute or two to do its thing. And then I didn't configure, oh, you know what? I goofed up again. I didn't configure the downstream connection so interface ETH 1 slash 6, switch port, switch port, mode trunk, channel group 6 mode active, uh, interface port channel 6, VPC 6. Let me go down to 5, paste that in. Six, paste that in. Okay, so now if I go back to, to three, I do a show VPC, show port dash channel summary. It's looking better, looking way better. 9K6, show VPC, show IP interface brief, BRF, pure keep alive. Okay, show VPC, suspended peer link is down. Show interface status, four and five suspended. Okay, five and six, show VPC, destination IP not reachable. Show IP interface brief, BRF peer keep alive. Show run VPC. Ah, see right here. This is where I made my mistake. I changed the IP, but my source is wrong. So let me go over here to VPC domain. Ah, okay, so here's another mistake I made. Okay, so this is what happens when you're moving too fast. So the mistake I made, and I'm actually going to retract my config and type in no VPC on five and six domain 34. Blow that away because it's not gonna work. Okay, same thing on this switch right here. No VPC domain 56. Okay. VPC domain does not exist. Okay. So what I'm going to do is right here, change it to be 56. And destination is going to be 2 with a source of 1 on this guy. So I'm going to reapply this config right here onto 5. There we go. And then on 6. I'm going to go ahead and make this show IP interface brief VRF pure keep alive two. So this will be destination of one, source of two. Uh, 5K, row priority one. 
six. Yes. Okay, so this is what happens when you make mistakes. So I'm gonna do a show run VPC, show VPC, peers alive, link is down. Show interface status. Okay, that's looking okay. Show VPC, peer link not configured. Show run interface port channel 100. Interface port channel 100. VPC peer link because I got rid of the VPC config that's why interface port channel 100 VPC peer link so now show VPC give that a minute that's gonna take some time okay that's better so be um, Peer adjacency formed, okay. Peer is alive. Same thing here. Port channel six is down. Uh, show run interface ETH one slash six. Show run interface port channel six. Interface port channel six, VPC six. Show VPC. Okay, so now I have to go down to switch 12. And let me go ahead and Host name is going to be switch 12. Um, interface range gig 0 slash 0 through 1. Switch port mode, or switch port trunk and cap.1q, switch port mode trunk. Channel protocol, LACP, channel group, 12 mode active. And then we're going to type in VLAN 200, name VLAN. 200 and an interface range gig 0 slash 2 through 3 switch port switch port mode access spanning tree or uh, switch port access VLAN 200 spanning tree port fast edge so, so LCP not cur not enabled on remote ports so uh, typically when you see this type of a situation happening and you do show interface status, and you see E16 is, oh, it's because I'm an idiot and forgot to enable the port. ETH 1 slash 6, no shut. Again, it's only when you make, when you're going too fast, the mistakes are made. So show VPC, it's up. Just like that. Show VPC, it's up. Switch 12, perfect. Show interface trunk, perfect. Okay, now that we've got all. So normally what would have happened is I would have gone through and I would have configured everything because this is normally how I do my projects is I will build, a, once I know design wise what it is I'm doing and where I'm doing it, I'll build my config in Notepad and the bulk of the time, I'm actually building a lab that's going to mimic what I'm doing. Unless it's something sim uh, simple like this where I'll just configure it and I'll read through my config two, three, four, five times and I'll pick out little things that might be problematic. For example, making sure the right IP address, the right VPC domain, because you can't have the same VPC domain on two pairs of switches and have them form a back to back VPC. That's never going to work. So if you look over here on this guy right here, if you do a uh, show port dash channel summary, we should see five is down between the two. On five, on that one, let's see here, show port channel summary. It's down completely on this side. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to bounce those interfaces. So interface port channel 45, let me shut the interfaces down and then no shut them. And interface ETH or uh, interface port channel 45, shut, and then no shut. 
sometimes that's what you need to do. You need to just flap the interfaces in order to trigger the connectivity. Um, and I will keep messing with that until it does its thing. It might be a three and four side too. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let me get out of the way. So we'll do a little bit of troubleshooting. Sometimes it's just a time thing. Other times you've gotta be sort of judicious about it and figure out why is it not working. So let me go ahead and do a logging con seven. On five and six, logging con seven and see show run interface eth one slash four through five okay show run interface for channel 45 okay so you don't configure the vpc on themselves it's just a straight port channel as long as it's in a port channel you're good to go show port channel summary let me bounce it on this side actually I think I already did it on this side let me go on this side here interface port channel 45 let me shut it logging con 7 and on 4 put a global config logging con 7 uh, interface port channel 45 let me shut it down and then come back up say no shut um, interface PO45, no shut. Okay, so one of the interfaces is down. Now it's just a matter of figuring out which one. No shut. Five is suspended. Let me see if I have it suspended on both sides. Four, four, and five are suspended. Let's do a show run interface ETH one slash four through five. Show run interface port channel 45. Okay, all of that looks right. So sometimes when you have these problems, sometimes it takes a reboot to try to trigger them. Other times you have to just rip the config out and try again. So actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, since considering It's down on both. I'm just gonna re. I'm just gonna yank the config. So no interface PO45. And then on five, I'm gonna say no interface PO45. And on five, I'll do the same thing. Say no interface PO45. And three. Show interface port channel. Sorry. Show port. Channel summary. Uh, no interface PO45. All right. So with that, now that I'm trying to do that, if we do show interface trunk, we're going to see that one of the interfaces has to go into a non-forwarding, just because the way that it is. So now I'm going to do a show run, uh, show port channel summary. Show run interface ETH one slash four through five. No channel group config. So interface ETH one slash four through five. Say so channel group 45 mode of active. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same. Show CLI history type on unformatted last 10.
do that to everything. And six. Let's give it a minute to uh, to do its thing. So we're gonna have a repeat of last time. One four on six. Yeah, they're both suspended. I d yeah, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, show port channel summary. Five is down. See, it seems to be six is the one I'm having the problem with. Three going this way is where it's down. I'm sorry, five. And on four, port channel five. I'm sorry, four are suspended. So port channel seems to be next. So this guy right here seems to be somewhat okay. Show port channel summary. I'm working towards three, but six is just giving me a hard time. So let me just double check this. Show VPC. Okay, that looks good. Show interface trunk. Okay, so in this particular case, seems like Nexus 9K6 is my problem child. It seems like we could, uh, three and four have connections to five. Uh, no. Five has a connection on four to three. but doesn't have a connection on five to four. So four and, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, this might be a, four is down, four goes to six, show port channel summary, four, oh wait a minute, I wonder, show VPC secondary, I wonder, now that I'm looking into this more thoroughly, show port channel summary. Both of them are down. Show VPC secondary. Okay, so let me go. Okay, so this is essentially what I'm seeing. The secondary VPC devices, and this is a version of code that I actually haven't played with and done the config on, is... Nexus 9K6 and Nexus 9K4 are both secondary VPC members. So the interfaces four and five on both are down. So if you do a show, well, that was weird. I accidentally shut the recording off. Um, so what I was saying was the, if we do a show port channel summary, we see the connectivity between these two is down for both interfaces right here and on four show port channel summary they're both down which tells me that because they're secondary devices that might be the new VPC operation where the the port channel might not be actively flowing which doesn't make a lot of sense because older versions of code it doesn't do that um, but it's unlike it's not something that I'm accustomed, I'd have to go look at the documentation to see if there's anything in there that says, hey, if you're doing a back-to-back -back VPC on this version of code, the secondary VPC device will show us down. It could be a virtualization thing, it could be an order of operations thing. Like if I wanted to fully vet this out, I would save the config and reboot the switches, uh, four and six, to have them come back online. So what I'm gonna do in the meantime, I'm, I'm actually not gonna do that, I'm gonna server 60 and 61. I'm going to go ahead and configure these guys as devices real quick, get them configured, and then what I'm going to do, let's over just a little bit, 
what I'm going to do is then test end end connectivity. Can I Nexus 3 and 4, does it see server 60 and 61? So let me go ahead and get this configured here real quick. So it's going to be host name is going to be SRV60, uh, no IP routing, IP default gateway is going to be uh, 172.31.200.1. Uh, interface gig 0 slash 0 IP address of 172.31.200.60 slash 24 and no shut save that config 61 same thing no let me see if um, well, I, I want to bring it all the way back over so give that a second to come online Host name is going to be SRV61. No IP routing. Default IP default gateway is going to be 172.31.200.1. Interface gate 0 slash 0. IP address of 172.31.200.61 slash 24. No shut. Do right. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to jump back over to Nexus 3 and 4. I should see something on Nexus 3. So Nexus 3, if I come in here and I do a show Mac address table dynamic, port channel 45, I see that's a good sign. Um, let me go show IP interface brief. Show IP ARP. Let me go ahead and ping 172.31.200.60. That's a good sign. 61. That's a good sign. Show IP ARP. I have entries for both. If I look at Nexus 9K4. Show VPC, show port channel summary, show MAC address table dynamic. I only see, I see this coming over the peer link, which is what I would expect to see because I am secondary. If I do a show VRRP, I am backup. So that's, okay, so what essentially what I'm seeing is this is VPC secondary devices, the port channel between the two goes down, which not that big of a deal. I'm not too terribly crazy about that. It is what it is. Um, but I was a little bit surprised to see that. And then we can see that with the rest of the config, both switches should appear as a single switch to switch 12. Three and four should be able to route between each other. Three should be the, the primary device. All that looks good. Okay, yeah, so end to end connectivity is in play. And that's the key feature that we're looking for, right? That's what we, we want to have operationally. Now that we have this done, the bulk of our config is out of the way for the layer two. Um, the, the core layer two configurations that we need to have are done. So we'll be able to take, in the next set of videos, we'll be able to start diving in when we get to um, setting up core routing, doing the internet edge, uh, WAN and Internet Edge, we'll be able to get uh, all that stuff working. We'll do get all that stuff squared away, all that, and then we'll start being able to go between these devices and be able to connect back and forth. That'll be really the, the driving force behind those pieces of understanding and all that. So uh, from a utilization perspective, I'm at 22% memory, 15% CPU. So looking really good. My goal, I think, how many Q, QEMU nodes? 58, okay. So there's supposedly support for a thousand nodes in a Eve instance or in a lab. I'm obviously not scratching the surface on that, but um, pretty cool stuff overall. My goal now is to, I still have three, six, or wait, no, four, eight, 11 
11 more Nexus switches to power on, which would give me a total of 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and 4 is 9, 9 and 4 is 13, 13 and 4 is 17, and 3 is 20. Give me a total of 20 Nexus switches. That would be a unheard of amount for me to have running. Um, but I see as it's conceivable. I have had eight running at one time. Server wasn't even batting an eye. So um, let me see if I can't do this real quick. Let me pull this back up. Uh, one little thing that I've learned when you've got a topology of this size running. One second here. Get all the way to the right. Now that I've added more stuff to this, if I look at this. This was the utilization a little bit ago. If I exit and log out, and then I restart the, can I restart, reconnect? Give that a second to uh, to come on uh, to come up. You'll see a. kind of weird that it, it hangs okay there it goes so now I'm sitting at 23% memory before it was 18 and 13% load 15% of a hard drive now I'm sitting at 17 and 23 and I was at 1244 processes now I'm sitting at 1197 so as you can see, the server is really not even being bothered by having such a large topology. And Nexus switches are pretty pretty heavy. So, um, but there you, there you have it. So right now, we're not going to be able to get anywhere until we get routing working. And that'll be the next video that we'll go through and get. I wish that this thing would stop popping out. Um, we'll get all that configured here in the middle. And then just start joining all of our modules together to start getting at least the core network squared away and all that deployed. Now, one thing that I was thinking about doing was getting this HQ data center online and then walking you guys through a full VXLAN deployment and then adding the colos at a later point in time. Um, I'm still not sure if I'm gonna do that or not because that would technically be the next video would be to do that. Um, but I wouldn't be able to do it all in one video. I'd have to break that up into a few videos just for the simple fact that it would take time to configure everything and I wouldn't want to go through it that fast. Um, I'd want to take a little bit of time. I'd probably focus on getting underlay working in one video and then focus on uh, getting basic layer three connectivity working because that's going to take some time and then another video to do the external connectivity and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly sure how long that would take but it might not take that long. It might be able to knock it out in one video. But um, unfortunately, I stopped the recording of this one prematurely. So I'm actually going to have to edit it together and be make it one video. But the way that I've got the, the, the lab written is that I'll do it in... Uh, there's a lot of moving steps to get all this working. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but there's a lot of moving pieces to it. So I'll be able to go through and do that. I'm thinking I might bump the HQ portion and just have HQ completely operational and then walk you guys through how to do that. And then once the routing comes into play, you guys will start to see more come into play. The more I'm thinking about that, the more I'm like, eh, that actually makes more sense uh, to do it that way. Have HQ completely operational and then start being able to do everything else because then routing will be end to end once we start getting you know, BGP online, getting DMVPN up and running, MPLS VPNs, having a fully functional environment. So I think I will. I think I'll get this working in the next video and then we'll go from there. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me. I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.